Hello, I'm Scott Wilkins with Backstage View. We're sitting here with the great Frank Sullivan from the great band Dirty Kitchen. Frank, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thanks, I appreciate Scott. it. Yeah, man. And your your sets here at the Thomas Point Bluegrass Festival have just been amazing as always. Oh, man, thanks. Yeah. You guys been traveling around a lot? And oh, man. Good Lord. Yeah, we've been, it seems like, all over the place and uh, super busy and playing for great crowds. And yeah, feel pretty pretty fortunate. And we have an air show here too. That uh, extra special. Oh, the Blue Angels are rocking and rolling, man. Flying right over us at and, times. And some of them, I bet, are your friends from your military experience. <laughs> well, I don't know any of those guys, but uh, I did play in the Navy band. Right, yeah. right. I wanted to ask. Maybe we could just start off with that. <laughs> right on cue. Right on cue. Right. <laughs> so uh, tell us. I, I, I uh, read a bit about, uh, but let it come from your horse's mouth here about I, I had uh, sorry <laughs> I, I read that uh, you started started out you were gonna play electric guitar for them but you really like went home and started woodshedding that because that wasn't your thing and somehow it, it changed over how, how, what was the story behind all that well I mean I always played the guitar you know um, but uh, mostly acoustic and uh, there's this position for the electric guitar in country current they said, hey, you play electric guitar? And I was like, you know, I'd known some of those guys, and I thought, you know, not really. And uh, anyway, they uh, said, well, do you play the electric guitar? And, uh, no, but I can learn. Do you play, the, you know, kind of one of those things. And I was like, all right. So I went and bought an electric guitar, a Telecaster, and started working it out and trying to get my uh, chops up. And months of, you know, day after day, trying to just build a vocabulary on, uh, you know, that style of music country and chicken picking and, you know, watch What were you of, playing before? Um, mostly, you know, mandolin and, and fiddle. Bluegrass. Yeah, and then some country bands, you know, I played in a number of country bands playing electric fiddle. And, you know, some guitar, but not much. Uh, like I say, I just started woodshedding and uh, watched a lot of Brent Mason and Albert Lee and, you know, folks like that. And, right. um, you know, just kind of got my head in the game, so to speak, you know, to learn the electric guitar. And went in and did the audition, and uh, it was behind a baffle, so they couldn't see you. And you weren't allowed to talk to anybody. They said, okay, here's the first song. We're going to kick it off. It's my got a, bl a blue angel coming here. Oh, I see them. Yeah, there they are. Four of them. Five of them. Oh, man. There they are. They're flying close. Be loud. Yeah. So, uh... Anyhow, yeah, I just uh, started learning the electric guitar. And, you know, after the, the the audition behind the baffle, you know, they they decided that well, they could take him down, and uh, you know, the few people that they liked stayed around, and we had lunch, and then next thing you know, they're saying there's some other folks that want to audition too, and you know, let's wait six months, and you come back and you know do that audition too, and uh, you know that you know basically I think they could tell that the electric guitar wasn't my gig but six months came and they offered me the job you know and did the other audition and is it, it's country current and the navy band like is it it's called the united states navy band right country and then the current oh it's okay i thought it was two separate things i thought they did bluegrass separately well it's the same band they just leave like the pedal steel player and the drummer at home and then they go right. and do bluegrass gigs and everybody uses acoustic instruments right 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 yeah so then you had to go through boot camp when they called you back? Yeah. Yeah, next thing you know, I'm, I'm doing push-ups and basic training, and then, you know, ten and a half weeks later, reporting for duty in Washington, D.C. Wow. And how long were you with them? Six years, one month, and 24 hours. Wow. That's awesome. <laughs> so what happened then when you came out? What, what was your... Uh... I kind of had a plan, you know, I was trying to get a band, you know, get, get my band kind of off the ground. and was building a tour and, uh, you know, try to just come up with a really good business plan, you know, which was, was tough the, to do. Was the Navy band helpful uh, or is all the business side of it not sure. with, with the musicians? Well, I learned a lot there, you know, but, uh, you know, I've learned so much more just being, you know, on my, right. doing my own thing. But, Learning the hard way. Yeah, I was just talking about it a little earlier with somebody. I was like, you know, you just got to do a lot of... Uh, uh, learning about the business you know yeah my friend Caleb Clotter uh, 
I don't know if you know who he is or not, but he has he's in a band called Foghorn. He has a band called Caleb Plotter Country Band, and a number of different projects. But he and I were talking about it, you know, and like Fog you're not going from what was here last night. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, you're not going to get anywhere unless you know anything about the business. You know, you got you got to. It's like almost like music business school or something. You know, he, they're based in Eugene or something on the Portland. Portland. Yeah. Portland so North. Portland West. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right. Portland East and Portland West. It's uh, so you're learning just on your own. Like you, you go out and and you obviously did uh, enough things right that you're, you're headlining. You're playing all the big places. You have Cold Spell out your your album that's yeah up for uh, an award at the IBMA right this year. Yeah, the, there's an instrumental on there that Mike Munford uh, composed and it's it's called Yeah Man. It's up for. Uh, Instrumental recorded performance, and I think we're up for uh, instrumental group of the year. But when Pretty you put cool. a band together, how do you get a Mike Mumford? He's the first person I called. He and I've been. Are you guys friends before? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I met Mike. Oh gosh, about 12 years ago, maybe now. Yeah. And uh, he was playing in this uh, band um, in a little club in Washington D.C., and I was invited to come up and like you know sit in and. Uh, you know, I was like, I just razz him a little bit. He's like, oh yeah, another person to come sit in. You know. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, I uh, get up on stage and was tuning up. And we did a couple of numbers where it was just like we were giddy. We love playing with each other, you know, oh, yeah. giddy on that stage. And we did a bunch of gigs, you know, just off, you know, offhand gigs or whatever you want to call them, to, you know, pick up gigs or whatever, you know. Uh, in a, the next few years, and then when I decided to, ha- you know, put this band together, like I say, he was the first person I called. He was one of the most musical people I know, and uh, I couldn't imagine running the road with anybody else. You know, he's just such an incredible player. Oh, and the other guys, tell, tell me about the other guys in the band. The, uh, well, you know, the, 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 guitar the current player lineup seems, you're talking about. Yeah. The current lineup, the guitar player seems like a uh, pretty young guy. Yeah, Chris is 25, and. Uh, He's an incredible player and a singer and Major, writes songs. And, incredible, yeah. yeah. he's a hoss. I think he'll be a household name in the world of guitar, you know. Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, and he, uh, and he just guitar, you know. He's, yeah. he's just an all-around good player. And uh, Danny Booth I met, uh, our bass player, in uh, in Alaska when we were teenagers. Yeah, moved up there. Up. Well, I moved up there when I was 18 and then uh, played a lot of music with his dad in uh, a few different configurations and then... Ended up in the same band with Greg, his dad, and Danny, in a band we had called Rank Strangers. Uh, all right, I'm gonna say again, the, the Earls of Weston, uh, you went up for how for a short spell after Tim uh, left, wasn't it? Well, yeah, they've had a few people, you know, sitting in. It's kind of like the uh, the roving Mando slot, you know, and, and tenor vocal. Uh, Ronnie McCurry is sitting. Um, you know, of course, Tim he did the record with them, and then. Um, Jeff White, uh, I think Lou Reed did a weekend with them, and then I did a, a couple weeks with uh, on tour with those guys in February, last February, and, and then you know we just happened to be at the same festival here, and he asked if I could fill in this weekend, so that's I just great. saw him pull in just a little bit ago. Yeah, uh, that's awesome. We've been sitting here. Yeah, well, I wanted a. a, a it's harkening back to the old, you know, blueprint print of bluegrass, you know, Flat and Scruggs, man. It's what I cut my teeth on. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and it seems like there's a new, uh, uh, you know, everything evolves. So, what's your, like, who are some of the bands that you like now in the bluegrass world that you, you're you listening to? And, uh, Man, you know what? There's so many great bands. Whenever I go to listen to music, though, I, I don't know if this is what people are supposed to do. It's just what I dig. Uh, I listen to a lot of, uh, you know kind of funk and old stuff, you know, like uh, Stevie Wonder, incredible singer and musician. Out too, yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah. I'm gonna have to go check him out. Um, you know, I listen to a lot of Little Milton, um, Tower of Power, uh, you know, all kinds of cool stuff that, you know, isn't bluegrass. Yeah, it isn't bluegrass. It's like, but, uh, you're, you're, it's like the uh, guy who fix his shoes all day doesn't want to go home and fix shoes that's what you do during the day well maybe so I, I don't know I've always been into that stuff though you know of course yeah. I, I listen to like Flat and Scruggs last couple of days you know Jerry sent me some recordings of some tunes that we might play this, you know tonight but 
Uh, so I've been listening to a lot of that, just trying to get my head wrapped around the Flat and Scruggs thing, you know. And like I say, I cut my teeth on that, so I listened to that, you know, when I was younger what, and growing up. And what would you? Uh, no, I bought this from home. Uh, recommend to musicians as far as uh, like practicing. Like, do you still have daily rituals, or like do you practice the way you used to practice? Are there certain, like, do you just like do a bunch of arpeggios or songs? Or? Well, you know, I, whenever I pick up a mandolin, I just kind of start slow and, uh, just, for lack of a better phrase, listen to my fingers and see what they're telling me what you know to play. But. Uh, Whenever I do like a, a clinic or a workshop or camp, you know, with mandolin or something, I, I always uh, talk about the four T's, which is uh, finding a good technique, to get a good tone, practice with timing really slow, and then increase your tempo. So if you go by finding a good technique for tone and always practicing in time, you know, with like a metronome, even if it's really slow, uh, practice it until you get it down you know at a certain tempo and then increase that tempo you know if it's something fast and you want to work towards you know keep increasing the tempo until you can't you know get it and then bring it back and then you know, practice uh, a little bit because like if you master, can't play it slow master the slow before you go to the fast well if you're not going to play if you're not going to be able to play it slow you're not going to be able to play it fast right right cleanly yeah. and with good tone so right yeah what kind of mandolin do you have that you uh that you use man well now, I'm, uh, on the last couple of recordings and when I'm playing on stage is the mandolin that I made with the help you of... You made it, that's right, I read that up. This is going to be an interview that you, you're going you're gonna to remember when... Uh, it'd be hard to forget. The interview when airplanes came by regularly, Blue Angels. Oh, it's all good, man. Yeah, so I made it and with the help of Roger Simonoff uh, out of Atascadero, California. Um, great guy, he, he runs these luthier camps you know, to show people how to make mandolins. He's written books on how to build instruments and uh, kind of like a guru, you know. It'd be like asking, hey, uh, you know, Browning or Sam Colt, hey, can you show me how to build a firearm? You know what I mean? Right, right. It'd be something like that, Do you know. Do you uh, uh, have experience in luthier experience before? Well, a little bit. I've hung around with or? a lot of luthiers. And, I, and actually, one, one of my dear friends, Michael Lewis, uh, I've been playing one of his mandolins for about 12 years, uh, an incredible master luthier and a few other friends of mine, but yeah, I, I've been kind of doing, you know, small little repairs and like uh, little little things and a lot of setup work and doing my own frets and bridges and saddles and nuts and things like that, yeah, for, right. for a number of years now. After this goes, I'm going to ask about the fiddle next, and once they pass, that, that's my follow-up uh, question to that, but... Uh, we don't know which way they're turning or something. I think we're safe. We're safe. Okay. Well, so then what? Uh, what uh, fiddle do you play? Uh, well, the one I have today, I have a number of fiddles, but the one I have today was uh, used to be one of my uncles, one of my dad, my dad's older brother, George, my uncle George, and uh, it's a uh, made in Czech, uh, Czech, Czechoslovakia, late 1800s, and uh, really a beautiful copy of the Guarneri violin, but. Yeah. So this, this uncle of yours, did you? Was it a big influence? Were you guys? When sure. You yeah, did, he showed me some together, tunes. You played a lot. Yeah. Well, my whole family plays. You know, my dad is ninth of ten kids, and all of his brothers and sisters play. And my grandmother and her oh, okay. sisters were like in vaudeville. You know, oh. and they toured around and, and did different. Uh, they were like acrobats. And they would play and sing. And I've heard that they. I've heard a few different things, but. Uh, you know, she passed away when I was in kindergarten, so I really didn't have a chance to ask her myself. But you know, I'd heard it, they would ride unicycles and like you know do like choreographed things, you know, and go over ramps and stuff, and and all the while playing music, you know. Was like, that's wow. incredible. Yeah, that's pretty wow. good. I want to even if it's not true, I still believe it, and I want I want to believe it. You know, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. Do you have? Um you're writing tons of songs all the time. And I wish. I'm not, actually. You're not? No. Well, it seems that way. I have a little hook book. I mean, I'll type in something on my phone, you know, and just kind of like when I get an idea or whatever. But I wish I was writing all the time. You know, being on the road, is, it's really tough to find the time to write, you know, and, and be inspired, you know, because when you get back to a hotel after a long day of your travel and then, you know, playing a show, you just kind of want to crash, you know. But, uh, but a lot of the, the audience that we're trying to get on the backstage view is 
the many musicians like that you'd see at the festivals, like music. Well, I, I mean, parking lot pickers, you know. Yeah. So when you were at that level, and you were, I assume, you were out there uh, a fan as well, running around. Yeah, well, we were jamming right over here last night. Yeah, yeah. Where were you? We were jamming over here as well. <laughs> Where the heck were you? <laughs> right we're going to be jamming tonight at that caboose thing, I know, too. right by the caboose, yeah. yeah. It's a little yeah. more scheduled, That's where but, you know. was uh, that first. Yeah, right. But anyway, what was, uh, like, I, I assume now, you know, you write a song now, and uh, it's a different world because you're doing this for a living, but when you were a younger uh, picker running around, uh, you must have written many songs, of which, like, only a few you would keep. I, am I correct? Man, yeah, I do have a lot of songs that I never really did anything with. Uh, but Seems like it's a common thing with uh, artists. Yeah, they call that your catalog. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, your catalog of songs. Yeah, I got a lot of those. but uh, And sometimes I'll revisit and maybe revamp some of them. And uh, I've done that. did that with our last record. There's a tune on there called Betrayal that I wrote. That's on Close Spell, yeah. Uh, yep, I wrote that, gosh, maybe when I was 18, 17, 18. Kind of revamp some of the words and yeah. you, know, wow. you know mess around with it. Mike says he loves that kind of you know like kind of dirty groove you know kind of a slow bluegrass monster stomp or whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, but the 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 songwriting process that you do though is it like uh, you just constantly writing or like right before an album you put the pedal to the metal yeah sometimes before an album I'll, I'll get a little bit more I'll try to schedule more time to write a few songs you know. yeah like the cold spell for instance I, it was a few weeks before we were going into the studio and we were, had some rehearsals lined up luckily but uh, you know I was like oh man I gotta come up with a couple more songs and cold spell was one of them and didn't expect it to be the title track but it ended up being the title track and uh you know, we had a couple of winters there where it was really cold and like a lot of snow came down. And some people referred to it as Snowmageddon, you know, but uh, anyway. Who, who makes that decision what the title track is? Is it like a team effort? Like uh, Suits well, tell I, you? Or? Well, I kind of ask everybody, but you know, ultimately it's, a, it's, it's me. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Whoever's producing the record, you know? Right. But, right. Um, but one of the other amazing, interesting things is. Uh, the the recipes the the country uh, the cooking that you do oh man yeah I love to cook uh, I've been speaking of writing I've been trying to write a dang cookbook for a number of years now and got a bunch of recipes and some you know little stories that go along with each recipe and uh, you know uh, just kind of would love to get that together at some point here and maybe be able to sell it at the merch booth or you know, even just beyond that, you know, just to try to get into the mainstream. We have on our, on our website, uh, we've just uh, taken, uh, here you met Jeffrey over here, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, doing that uh, a cooking piece, uh, oh, on cool. basing it on going to festivals, how to most easily have great food by doing a little preparation oh, yeah. ahead of time. Ahead of time, before festival. you go, yeah, it's a great idea. Yeah. An alternative cooking method. All right, yes, put it in the sun. Hey, you know, sun can cook beans. What's that? Sun can cook beans. The sun can cook beans. Yeah. All right. And tea. And tea. <laughs> uh, you got a new album set coming in a while, but for us to look forward to. Uh, what's yeah, up? man, well, I'm really excited. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I, I always wanted to do a full record with my mom, but she passed away last year, and, uh, you know, Luckily, I have one recording I'm going to put on this record with her, but ended up being a uh, kind of a tribute to the idea of that. You know, there's some songs on there that she used to sing, songs on there that she liked me to sing, and, you know, just some other stuff too. But it's called Family, Friends, and Heroes. And like I said, I come from a big musical family, so I got a lot of, you know, family that came in. My dad, some cousins, some cousins from Hawaii, uh, a number of friends, uh, and you know, Del McCurry, he came in and sang Tenor on Pretty Woman with me, and uh, Sam Bush, John Callen, Jerry Douglas, Rob Bikes, Jim Hurst, uh, Mike Bubb, you know, it's a good a, crew. It's, uh, it's My cousin everybody. Megan, yeah, yeah. It's everyone, that's incredible. So when, when that all comes together and everyone's there, 
Are you, you're the one directing everything, making the... Yeah, yeah, I was I producing the record, a, yep. Oh, you produced it as well, I didn't know that. Yeah, I produced, oh, all, had a hand in production of all my records, yeah. I didn't, just figure, like, nobody really knows how I want to sound better than I want to sound, I guess, or maybe, I don't know. It's amazing that you, you, you went... I, I've never heard of anyone who gets invited to join a band and then has to go through boot camp. I mean, that's that's uh, pretty intense. I mean, if, are we if, back to the Navy again? <laughs> no, I just wanted to say that that's pretty amazing in and of itself. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you know, you knew where you were going. You know, it wasn't yeah. like they were gonna send you off some to some right. you know ship somewhere. Well, they'll send you with an instrument though. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, you kind of cool. sign your life away a little bit there, but you know it's all good. Right? Oh, it's great, man. I mean, it's brought you where you are now, and you're it's the military. Yeah, you know, you're producing, and, and you, you seem to have uh, control uh, of everything going on. Yeah. So well, you, you know, only yourself to blame. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, well, you know, the thing about the Navy it was a good job and all those things, and I kept reminding myself of that, and uh, there was a lack of fulfillment, and I needed to, you know, there's a difference between playing music and making music, and right. I needed to go and make music. The creative yeah. part of like the new music, as opposed to just the uh, yeah, or or just not having so many people that can tell me what to do, right? You right. know, and uh, in addition to not being able to be an artist, you know what I right. mean? So, so the the therapeutic aspect of being an artist. Well, yeah, and not being stifled, you know, uh, just being able to. You know, if I want to take a vacation, you can go take a vacation. Or if you want to go, you know, whatever. It's just, right there. Yeah. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I was honored to serve in the military and play in that band for sure. But, you know, I needed something different. Could I uh, pull out a mando and you play a number or two or something? Oh, like I don't know, know, man. Okay. <laughs> we'll take that as a yes. Did Tim O'Brien play this man on the other He did. He did. He played it, and, uh, and I was uh, very psyched about it. And uh, now I'm uh, psyched again. First song I learned on the mandolin. And the guitar, for that matter. It's kind of like our family. We, it's the first song everybody learns. The one, four, five. You know that song? I know one, four, five. Wait, that's pretty much what we were doing last night. A lot of one, four, five. That's it. That's a little brown jug, you know what I mean? My wife and my little brown jug Went across the river on a hickory log mm -hmm. Wow, and then the crowd roared. Oh, the, and the crowd goes mild. Yeah. <laughs> mild. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll try one that my grandmother used to play. Let's see. I know you got you got places to go now. Yeah, man. Thanks for letting me play your ex. Th thanks for for uh, uh, sitting down with me. My I pleasure. Appreciate it, and I.